Surely you've never heard of the legend of Vox Machina. Allow me to give you a proper introduction. Oh, gods, here we go. Behold, the fantastical world of Exandria. Idyllic for many years, a great evil has arisen to despoil the tranquility once enjoyed by those who call it home. This is the story of the band of heroes who stood against that evil. What the f Oh, th this isn't them. I don't actually know who these people are. We'll never fall to your- Well, that was something. Can we cut to the actual main characters, please? Ha ah, here we go. This is the legendary mercenary group Vox Machina. <laughs> uh, well, okay, they're not exactly legendary yet. They're more into easy money and cheap ale at this point, but they are the stars of the fittingly titled The Legend of Vox Machina, the new Amazon original adult animated series currently available on Prime Video. This is everything you need to know. Brought to you by Amazon Original, The Legend of Vox Machina. Vox Machina was created by a group of well-known voice actors and friends who call themselves Critical Role. Intent on taking their successful live stream to the next level, the options were seemingly limitless. A perfume line? An official Bath Mac collection? A series of Vox Machina character NFTs? Those were bad ideas and you should all feel bad. The correct answer, of course, was an animated special based on Critical Role's first tabletop role-playing campaign. The Kickstarter was intended to fund on just the one 22-minute show, but when funding blew past the goal, the project became a full series. We're rich! Then Amazon picked it up and it expanded even further into the high-end show you see before you, streaming exclusively on Prime Video. It seems being a bunch of assholes has its merits. Now, if you've never seen Critical Role, fear not. You don't need to know anything about it or even anything about tabletop RPGs to enjoy The Legend of Vox Machina. It starts off at the beginning of Vox Machina's career, so you won't have missed anything there. And as for the lore and backstory, no prior knowledge of elves or wizardry necessary. The show is geared towards adults with a smart blend of adventure and raunchy humor. Being adult, after all, doesn't necessarily mean being mature. We appreciate the gravity of the situation and will present ourselves with the utmost dignity. <laughs> Oh, and let's not forget the absolutely brutal combat sequences. You want gore, balls to the wall, kills? Look no further. Now with that said, the core of any good story is its characters. So let's meet Vox Machina. Is that all you got? Allow me. Ahem! Vox Machina, champions of justice, hunters of dragons, destroyers of chastity. Ugh. Vax and Vex are twin half-elf siblings. But I forget which one is which. He's Vax. She's Vax. Vax fancies himself a suave, charming, studly hero type. And he is, but well, sort of. But given Vox Machina's, let's say, circumstances, he's also a shadow skulking opportunist with some sticky fingers. I'll take that. Yeah. Not bad, brother. Vax uses enchanted daggers that magically return to him after they're thrown at a target. And he is deadly accurate with them. He and Vex tend to be perceived as somewhat less than team players. Vex and Vax only care about themselves. Oh, oh, you. But Vax does have a heart and a kind streak. Due to the strife he and Vex suffered years ago, he has a strong desire to see justice done when innocents are threatened or hurt. One day, maybe he'll fully embody the upstanding hero role, but in the meantime, he's the group's go-to expert on breaking and entering. All it takes is a little finesse. Amateurs. Vex's twin sister Vex is less about sneak and more about sass. Skilled, confident, and cool under pressure. She's always ready with a sharp word or an even sharper arrow from her bow. Oh, and she has a bear. His name is Trinket. Good boy, Trinket. Over here. Now, if you like your nature magic casters as awkward as they come, Keyleth just might end up being your favorite Vox Machina member. Get up with the hell, Keyleth. This is important, so 
Keyleth is a half-elf druid, which means she can call on the power of nature to attack and constrict her enemies. Why does this happen every time we go out drinking? She can also shapeshift into various animals, always a handy trick in a fight. Her awkwardness does take its toll. Keyleth's confidence problems and worries about proving herself can interfere with her magic, and she may freeze up in really high pressure situations. Now, she usually comes through in the end, though. Percy is the sole human member of Vox Machina, and is as refined as he is brilliant. He uses a firearm called a pepper box, which he built himself. It's a highly unusual weapon in the land of Exandria. Percy can be snobbish and abrasive at the best of times, but there's no denying his effectiveness. I'm simply suggesting you could all benefit from some well-practiced restraints. The main story of season one is extremely personal to him as it sends Vox Machina to his family's former home of Whitestone, stolen from him by the usurping Briarwoods. And when Percy gets personal, well, things get dark. Percy's pepper box has the names of those who betrayed his family etched on the barrel, each chamber waiting to take deadly revenge. Safe to say, Percy's got some anger issues to work out. Speaking of anger, Grog is the impossibly strong half-giant whose gigantic axe and terrifying rage form the backbone of the team's fighting strategy while his endless appetite for ale forms the backbone of their drinking strategy. Yeah, now we're talking! He can be a little overzealous. Well, perhaps if someone didn't accidentally decapitate the last fellow who hired us. I apologize, didn't I? Now, Grog's not too bright, but he's a brave and loyal friend who always finds himself elbows deep in any given predicament. Scanner, look at they're in the booty. That is so cool. Vox Machina is defined by its intergroup conflicts as much as its camaraderie, but Grog might be the one member that is most universally liked by the others. Now, he's particularly close with Pike, the group's cleric, who is his best friend in the world. I have to do this alone, buddy. What if I need you? <laughs> Pike is the light of the group, a gnome with access to the Everlight. This powers her magical healing and combat abilities. Now, it's not a stretch to say she's Vox Machina's conscience, urging them to do the right thing when circumstances tempt them to act less than nobly. If protecting carts from swindlers and killing goblins for gold isn't getting us anywhere, maybe we could try doing some good this time? Nah. Boring. And finally, there's Scanlan, the gnome bard. And Scanlan wants to bed everyone in the realm. Yes, you can say it, Keyleth. I'm not ashamed. Able to improvise a song at the drop of a hat or his pants, whichever is appropriate at the moment. A two, three, four! Give me a tug! Ha! He can also use his songs in battle to the point that he considers his loot a weapon. And in a pinch, he can summon... Scanlan! useful for all kinds of situations. Now, over the course of the series, they go from allies of convenience to a tight-knit group that cares about and supports each other. Legend of Vox Machina has plenty of laughs and action, but that's built on a foundation of three-dimensional characters and heartfelt performances. So, um, what are we supposed to be doing again? Watching this show, obviously. Its unique blend of adult humor, razor-sharp action, top-quality animation, and high-fantasy adventure is like nothing else out there. The series is now available on Prime Video. Take us home, Scanlan. The telltale of our exploits in the legend of Vox Machina. Oh, thank you very much.